so we're on to great expectations and if you're writing about that you might look at these ideas from the Acre Anthology you can quote them or you can summarize them and respond to them it's even better to write about actual critics who are writing about great expectations and I've got those collected on SharePoint for you so this is one quote from the critical anthology and certainly the protagonist of this novel is Pip um, and um, we see everything from Pip's point of view and we know what he knows so um, there's a, a narrator point to be made there this male worldview um, so just these aren't quotes but thinking about your text it's interesting because the antagonist keeps changing you could say he doesn't realize it's uh, Miss Havisham but maybe it turns out to be Miss Havisham because of how she made a Stella act or is it Stella or is it uh, Magwitch or not Magwitch we've got Orlick who's a minor antagonist um, so many um, to choose from there uh, this interesting one about reward characters um, um, Estella would be a reward character and he does get her in the end in one version but in the original version he didn't and um, that why he wants her that's why is she a reward character because she's pretty uh, she's very beautiful he always wanted her never nice to him no relationship so it's quite an interesting reward to be given um, I might say Miss Havisham and Estella are purely involved with love but we do have Mrs Jo who um, has other roles I'm afraid and um, the Bechdel test of this novel I don't think it would pass there are women talking to each other but mainly about men um, maybe you can help me with that one so moving on to acts that we think of as completely private turn out to be an extension of the public sphere and that's quite interesting about Miss Havisham's response to being jilted at the altar she becomes totally private she lives in a house she never goes out she's um, uh, mentally ill some people might say I don't know if Dickens presents it in that way and you might think that's a completely private guilt but on the other hand, um, is it, has she failed at what Victorian women have to do? Is she responding to a society which says that the most important thing for a woman is to get married uh, and to get married well? So, you know, is her illness a metaphor for how women um, are treated or how women judge themselves, have learned to judge themselves? Um, when they fail at romance it's quite an interesting public private thing there um, so I'll come back to this one with stereotypes I think so here's another quote for you um, that women saying that women are naturally timid or sweet or intuitive or, or anything is to construct a role for them and um, interestingly Miss Havisham has Estella uh, isn't born <clears throat> as a seductress who um, wrecks, wrecks Pip's life. Miss Havisham created her. Miss Havisham brought her up to be um, a destructive person. So it's not her natural self. It's quite an interesting idea. You might find that Biddy is a naturally sweet person or that um, Mrs Jo is, is naturally bullying um, and that's what older women and younger women are like I don't know about those um, but you might be able to get something from that quote how does Dickens present natural women or what he thinks women are naturally like let's move on to um, feminist critics showed how often literary representations of women repeated cultural stereotypes such stereotypes included the woman fast car or not as an immoral and dangerous seductress so we've definitely got Estella there 
And you must write about that stereotype and not seeing behind it because you have the narrator Pip who doesn't understand her or it or anything about the situation. We also have an eternally dissatisfied shrew. We have Mrs. Joe, and it's very good to look at the beginning of chapter two and um, her, how recognisable that character is. The woman, and we don't get beyond that with Mrs. Joe, is what I'm saying. He doesn't develop her. Cute but essentially helpless. We don't have that. I can't think of that. I'm not sure about whether that's Biddy or not because um, she's not beautiful enough, not cute. Um, is she patient? I'm thinking um, not to do that one. Unworldly, self-sacrificing angel. There's your biddy, really. Um, and you could... So the important thing is you might have these stereotypes, but as a writer, you might investigate them and deepen them. And I don't think that um, Dickens does... Um, we've got Miss Havisham as the bride, but a ridiculous satire on the bride, really, the romantic heroine. Um, dependence leads to indulgence and reverence, while independence, like, tends, leads to dislike and rejection. Um, so the women you like in the novel, are they um, dislikable or unsympathetic. Female independence, I'm looking at the next quote, in the seductress and the shrew, gets a strongly negative connotation. I certainly don't like Mrs Havisham or Estella or Mrs Joe, and the reason I don't like them is the way that Dickens has written it and through Joe's eyes, it's, um, sorry, through Pip's eyes and not explaining them. Helplessness and renouncing all ambition and desire are endearing and admirable. I'm less aware of that, but Biddy might be an interesting character there. Um, oh, I think I've just said that. The strong and independent and rebellious ones are not nice. Um, thinking a bit about masculinity. Uh, traditional masculinity is a gender role that has far less to do with actual males, blah, blah, blah. Mas mas masculinity too is a cultural construction and this is interesting with Pip um, and how he's in the pay of this woman he thinks he is. I think he's more interesting maybe though with class with that so he thinks he wants to be a gentleman and then he realised that gentleman has got ungentlemanly roots in Magwitch and he doesn't quite succeed in it so I'm I'm thinking it's more difficult um, with that one. Um, I think this is the last slide. But I want, I've taken out the slides about male gaze. I think I shouldn't have because it's the sight of Estella and the look of Estella that captivates Pip for nearly his whole life. Um, so thus, in feminist criticism in the 70s, the major effect went into exposing what might be called the mechanisms of patriarchy. So this novel, you might say, um, continues patriarchy, um, it is a tiny cog in, in the works of um, maintaining patriarchal attitudes uh, that Miss Havisham is, is worthless without her husband that uh, these beautiful, cruel women who will bring you down, that you want a nice next door biddy to settle for. Um, these sorts of ideas are actually continuing patriarchal ideas. You could disagree, though, and say that um, Miss, Miss Havisham is almost a satire on marriage and a criticism that she's mentally ill and that this is what her society has done to her and she passes on the pain through what she does to Estella. So you could say, no, it's, it's more of a criticism of the system. Or if you were being super duper clever, which you don't actually need to be at all, but I'll throw it in there for you. Dickens is going along with what he recognised with his own time without thinking about it too hard and getting us to dislike these female characters that are independent and strong. 
um, that Dickens isn't liking them, but or, or meaning anything by it, but that we, uh, a century and a half, nearly two centuries later, we can see it as a criticism of the system that Miss Havisham is mentally ill, she's depressed. Certainly, if she was living like that now, we'd have the psychiatrist around, wouldn't we? Um, so, um, you don't have to think Dickens meant it. You can say that you don't think it's particularly a mechanism of patriarchy. Or you can just straightforwardly say, yes, this text supports all these patriarchal ideas about men and women. Good luck.